How's it going guys? Welcome back to another video. This one's a little different to what I'm normally doing, but um, it's a bit of a build style. Now, this video is all about me converting these forks to be able to fit these 27.5 inch carbon fiber wheels. This is a through axle style wheel. So I've put in different dropouts. I've welded on some disc brake tabs and I've also put in a couple of bottle bosses. The original plan was to do the rear as well using a different frame. I was going to weld these on the back here. They're a slide dropout, but I just ran out of time. So I might end up doing a, a part two to this video, but yeah, just today, all about these forks. All right, up first, we're gonna start with these forks. These are an old Diamondback fork, and I believe these dropouts are brazed in. So I'm just gonna get on the wire wheel here, take the paint off, and then we'll get the oxy out and we'll see if we can uh, remove these dropouts. All right, that's looking pretty good. There's a little bit of paint on there still, but it's a bit hard to get off, so we'll leave it on there. Let's get the oxy out. Now, I know this is my idea, but I've actually never used an oxy, so I'm gonna get Dad to do this part, and I'm gonna film it. Good. Oh yeah, no. he's definitely wearing some sort of footwear. <laughs> there you go. And we're out. <laughs> well, there you have it. The old dropouts have been removed. I'll just put it on the table so you can see it a bit better. But it is time to get the new dropouts and try and install them. All right, I am back and I've got a few dropouts. These things are not perfect and I've found out that this is a little trickier than I expected. Now my original idea to put bigger wheels on these old 90s forks came from browsing the web on bike building pages and I noticed you could buy a longer through axle style dropout and I thought if I can extend the axle to crown length, I should be able to fit in a more modern 650B wheel size. So I bought a set but I bought these before I even had any forks to play with, and that's where I ran into my first issue. So these through axle style dropouts that I bought are a plug style, and then when I got the forks and we removed these originals, they're a tab style. Now, not to worry, I thought we've got a heap of extra length with these ones, so I can just square off the end of the fork, braze them in there, and we're good to go. But then I've come into a, another issue, and that's, I've got a 15 millimeter axle on these bigger wheels, and I could find the 15 millimeter versions of these overseas, but I couldn't find them anywhere in Australia. I'd seen you can buy an adapter, so I just bought the 12 millimeter version, and I thought I'd give it a go. When I put these 12 millimeter ones up against my hub, they actually don't align centrally, so the only way to make it work would be to fold down that little lip on the dropout, and I really don't want to do that. With the availability issues of these 15 millimeter through axle style dropouts, I've pretty much given up on the idea. And I've found you can buy this adapter, which allows you to use a through axle type wheel with quick release dropouts. My issue now is all the quick release dropouts that I can find online 
are very short and it's not going to give me that axle to crown length that I really want for the, the bigger wheel. I did find this plug style dropout though. It's a little longer, it's going to be tight but I've decided to just have a crack and uh, we'll see how it goes. The aim was to keep these forks as long as possible. So instead of cutting the end off to fit in these plug style dropouts, we decided to spread the end open, which will give us about an extra 10 mil of length. Don't bother trying this. Here's a little jig I made just to be able to align the forks with these loose dropouts, but when I had the original dropout still in there, I put it in place and made a little mark. So now it's currently sitting about 10 mil longer. So hopefully that extra length is enough to fit this bigger wheel. Let's find out. It fits, it fits. <laughs> Plenty of room. Beautiful. That's cool. Alrighty, I've got the forks. They're uh, bolted up on my little jig and we're ready for brazing. Although, I've just been chatting to Dad and he's never built a bike before, but he has got a lot more experience with brazing and silver soldering and these type of dropouts, he thinks that uh, silver soldering will work better. So I'm gonna trust him and I'm gonna let him take over while I play with the camera and uh, if they break, we'll blame him. Let's give it a crack. Not initially. Looking good. Well, a little rough, but good. I'm happy with that. I'll let that cool down and I'll show you what else I've made. All right, now that these dropouts have cooled down, it's time to move on to the brake mounts. Now I've done a bit of research and I've found online the ISO standard for the location of a brake tab. 
and it gives you some radiuses and some other dimensions but to make it easy I've made myself another jig which should hold my little tab in the perfect position so we can uh, I'll probably just tack it on and then we might braise it on so next step All right, I've bought in my XC bike. This is uh, the bike I'm planning to borrow the wheels off. So just gonna steal this front wheel so I can uh, see if it fits. You have no idea how happy this makes me. <laughs> yes. Well, that went a lot better than I was expecting. I would go as far as saying that that position is pretty much perfect. So I think it's time I take it back to the welding bay and see if I can ruin all the good work with my dodgy welding. See what happens. It's getting a bit windy out here. For someone who's not a welder, it might not be the prettiest weld in the world, but um, I think it's strong enough and I'm happy with that. I think. <laughs> All right, the forks are pretty much done now. Uh, just one last little job, and that is installing a couple of bottle bosses. That way I can mount a rack or some bottle cages. Uh, and I've also got a hose guide, so the hydraulic line's got something to tie onto. And then they're done and uh, ready to put on the bike, so.
Well, there you have it. The forks are complete. Apart from a lick of paint, but I think I'll try them on a bike first. So I'm going to take these home with me and uh, put them in and go for a spin and see if they break. <laughs> oh, a lot of work for something you can buy pretty cheap, but keeps me entertained and hope it's entertained you guys as well. Let's go do it. Alright, here is the old Shogun that you would have seen at the start of this video. I haven't had time to weld on the new dropouts yet, and I'm going on a bikepacking trip next weekend. And to be honest, I'm not much of a fan of this frame. It's really rigid and it's heavy and just rough to ride. That's one of the reasons why I was happy to cut it up. So I'm not going to use this bike. I'm going to set up this old rally. I've got one issue though. The steer tube on these forks, it's pretty much the perfect length for the Shogun, but they're about 10 or 15 millimeters too short for the rally. I really want to ride the rally, so I've decided I'm going to try and weld another bit of steer tube on top there and uh, extend them a little bit just to make these forks that little bit more dodgy anyway I do think it'll be strong enough so I'm gonna give that a crack There we have it. Let's go for a test ride. These cables are a little bit obtrusive, but I plan to put a frame bag in there, so I've left them long for now. Well, that is riding pretty sick, and I can't see any cracks in the forks yet, so pretty stoked. That's riding good. Before I end this video though, I will mention that I did uh, put a 27.5 inch wheel on the back as well, but it's a really small tyre, so it fits, and to be honest, I think it was a waste of money because the outside diameter is about the same as my old 26 inch wheel with the bigger tyres, so that was silly. Um, because I'm going to keep playing and stuff, I'm not going to bother with any bar tape or anything like that. Um, when I eventually perfect everything, I'll um, I'll put some bar, proper bar tape on and 
finish it off a bit nicer but yeah pretty chuffed might start working on part two soon but um anyway thanks for watching see you then Now I personally don't care about wheel sizes. The only reason I'm doing this project is because I wanted to use these lighter weight carbon fiber wheels. But I just want to show you something in case you're thinking about converting a bike to 27.5 inch wheels. Here on your right is a 27.5 inch wheel with a smaller sort of tire on it so it will fit in the frame. Here is my 26 inch wheel with a bulkier tire that I've been using but if I sit them side by side and I put a level across it there's honestly only about 5 mil difference in the whole outer diameter it's really not worth doing if I compare let's say the 26 with a bigger 27.5 there's a bit more in it Yeah, that's probably like nearly a 25 30 centimeters so if you're doing it with putting smaller tires on <laughs> there's no point anyway let's go back a few months to where i start this video and uh yeah <laughs>